Good morning, everybody. It is November 30th today. Uh, it is minus 18 currently. Got down to minus 22 last night down here at the South Farm. Um, we got some trucks. I already met some trucks on the road. We got some more trucks down there loading. And we are going to uh, hop in my uh, White International here, fire it up. It has not been running. It hasn't been running since we washed it. Uh, what was that? A few days ago now. I do have a Wabasco on here, but I did not have it set. And it got a lot colder than I thought it was going to. I actually only thought it was going to get down to minus 10. It got down to minus 23 degrees. Uh, so that's pretty chilly. So it was not plugged in. I did not have it anywhere where it could be plugged in. So we're going to do a cold start. Oh. Okay. Whoa, sorry about that. Is she gonna go? Did not go? Oh. Come on. Come on, come on. Uh-oh. Come on, baby, come on. I don't think she's gonna go. Oh, no, that might be it here. Oh. All right, we're gonna fire up our Wabasco, which is right here. There's our problem. This thing's got this fancy dancy load shed level. So if it uh, if it senses your battery draw getting too low, which it was, did I ever tell you that technology is not always good? Okay, I just pushed this button. Since I scratched my screen, uh, you're probably not gonna get to see this very good. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna have to go through and set this thing all up. <sighs> okay. Okay, so I had to set up the time. Ooh. And we turned it on. These little red tells us that uh, our Robasco is about to fire up. All right. And then we're gonna go for a coffee. You guys hear it? It's gonna get going here, it's just warming up. This should be our exhaust hose. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. It's kind of starting like I do in the morning. I don't think it's hundred percent going yet, but oh, it is because it's getting hot. In fact, it's getting really warm. It's warming up my fingies because it's cold outside. Awesome! We're gonna go for a coffee, and we're gonna let that thing uh, warm up our truck. And hopefully, we didn't uh, drain the batteries down too low. If we did, we'll just hook this truck onto it and boost it. Oh, there you can see the exhaust, you guys. Sorry, but right down there. Awesome. All right, so it's been about an hour and 15 minutes. It's still going. Speaking of my cell phone, um, I'm still rocking the uh, Note 20 Ultra. 
uh, 500 gig internal storage, but then on the Note 20 Ultras, you can have uh, an SD card in there. So I got a one terabyte. So I got 1.5 terabytes of storage between my phone and the uh, card. Obviously, I've been looking. I'm trying to get the new, uh, I think it's the 22 Ultra. Uh, but the problem is, to my understanding, is you can no longer put an SD extra memory card. You can't stick a low extra memory card in there, which is a problem because... I use a lot of storage. Now, they do have a one terabyte internal storage, but according to Samsung, it's not even released yet. And I've called all around different cell phone companies. Yeah, you can't get it, you can't get it. I can get the 500 gig, but that really doesn't do me any good because I fill it so fast. Um, so it, it is a conundrum. So if you guys know where you can get that one terabyte 22 Ultra, Put it in the comments. That's what I'm looking for. But let's uh, fire this thing up. It's been going for a little over an hour. Oh, well, there you go. Fired right up. So obviously, you know, I think I told you guys, you can auto set these suckers. I did not do that. I didn't think it was going to get that cold. It was kind of a dumb move on my part. Uh, you'd be surprised. I'm just looking at my temperature here. I mean, you know, it's still about 100. I'd be surprised what that Wabasco will do. Is that a little over 100? Maybe a little bit. I believe they're supposed to get it up to like 120, 150 degrees or something like that. But anyways, we're going to let this thing have a good warm up. And uh, then we gotta go down and uh, load it up. I can't feel my fingers. You guys can't see me very clearly just because my screen's all scratched up. I apologize that my screen's scratched up. I scratched it up with the keys. Yes, I can send my phone away to go get a new lens put on and some stuff like that, but then I don't have a phone. Uh, you already know I don't do GoPros. I don't do GoPros, but uh, anyway, let's let this thing warm up. All right, we got this thing warmed up here. We're gonna give her, pop the brakes in, put it in gear. And we need to make sure that our uh, tires on our trailer are turning, because remember we washed this truck, and they're not. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> they're froze up. Oh, no, I broke that one loose. Okay, hold on. No, this thing still feels like it's something's dragging here. All right, I'm gonna try and show you. It's hard to, so what you do as a trucker, every morning, whether you washed it prior or not, it doesn't matter whether you just parked it the night before. Um, if it's empty, even if it is loaded, you always put it in first gear, and you always go really slow, and then you pull out like this, so you, that way you can see all your tired axles, trailer axles, Dad's gonna watch because he sees that it probably froze up in your mirror. And then you turn the other way so you can watch it because you want to make sure that you're broke loose. And I'm almost spinning here, so I know that I can't. I'm gonna see if I can. Oh, my windows are froze up. Of course they are. Okay, the first one is snowed all the way around. It's turning. That look at that back one. I'm gonna try back up. Oh, whoa! Sorry about that. It is not turning. The two on the back. Oh, I think it maybe did it break loose. It broke loose. Holy crap! It broke loose. We're gonna zoom back in here. We're gonna go forward. Turning, turning, the back two. On that back trailer, I think we're turning. That middle one is turning, you can tell by looking at the ground. It's turning. Okay, they're all turning on this side. Look at this side here, see if this window will go down. No, it throws up too. Okay. 
All right, first axle's turning. Third axle's turning. Middle one, I think it is here. Yes, it is. Back to. It's hard to tell, I know, I'm sorry, but it's, there's a bunch of film on my, uh, it's, it's actually off my mirror. Probably just open this thing up. Okay, so just so you know, you can actually put these yellow reflective, uh, I don't actually know what they're called, but they just bolt on on your lug nuts. So that way it actually sticks out past the rim so you can actually clearly tell without even having to really turn in, you can just tell. In fact, since they're reflective, you can see it at night if you throw your lights on in the back. We do not have those on our trailers. Sometimes I don't know why we don't, but we don't. So, all right, another thing obviously you want to do, um, which I have already done when I washed it, remember when I was greased it, you want to make sure you set up all your brakes, you check all your brakes, make sure you do a walkthrough, make sure all your lights work. That's actually part of your pre-trip. Technically, you're supposed to do a pre-trip. Of course, I always do my pre-trip with this. All right, let's head down to the bins here. Also, if you are wondering about my check engine light, you're like, Mike, your check engine light is on and you're nearly out of def. That is because this truck no longer requires def. And because of that, I have a check engine light on and uh, it's not supposed to be on. It just kind of came on. I just got to take it back. It's just because the engine doesn't see that it's using the def and or something like that. So, uh, I'm all for environmental crap. It just has to be reliable. And we all know how reliable DEF is during the Canadian winters. But, you know, speaking of DEF, you know what would actually fix the reliability of DEF, you guys? Is if it was actually mandatory for the commercial airlines to have to use DEF. Like the big diesel users. Let's talk about the big fuel users of the world, the commercial airlines, even the private jets, um, you've got the locomotives, the train engines that haul all your freight and fertilizer and all the grain to the ports. How about all those big grain ships that are filling pump full of grain and then they're going to all over parts of different parts of the world uh, to sell that? Um, how about the cruise ships that you're sitting on now? They're not required to run DEF either. Um, uh, how about the aircraft carriers? They're not required to run DEF. How about the battleships? They're not required to run DEF. How about the uh, fighter jets, the stealth planes? They're not required to run DEF either. In fact, you won't find a lot of emergency vehicles using DEF. If the option is available, like ambulances for an example, they'll always run big gas engines. Why? Because it doesn't work very good for having a 911 call and you're going out because someone's actually dying and you throw a DEF code and it puts your engine in D-rate and then you, your, your ambulance can no longer actually get to where you need to go and that person dies. But could you imagine putting DEF on commercial airlines? Just think about that for a second, you guys. Just think about that. You have 200 people in that airline. Most of them are like these Boeing 737 Maxes have two engines on them and all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, we have a DEF code in one and the DEF line throws up on number two and we're gonna put the, uh, Number two is definitely done. Like that engine is shutting that shutting down. We're going to derate engine number one because an air code came up and you happen to be over the Atlantic Ocean. Why well, you are all gonna die. I hate to break it to you, but you're all gonna die. You imagine the headlines of every single airline coming down out of the out of the sky crashing because of a def code. It's like we're gonna derate your engine and there's nothing you can do. I bet you they would fix a lot of that def stuff. Guaranteed they would. <laughs> Guaranteed, if lives started depending on it, they would fix it. But since they're not required to do it, it's a do as I say, not as I do. Well, that's not going to last for very long. Let me tell you about that. Anyways, we got to load this thing up. Woo! 
It is cold out here. We gotta let this engine warm up. Oh, another truck here to load. Burn! Hopper number four. Um, we've been loading for uh, 13 minutes here so far. So, and I can see, I can see it piling up there. Right down there, yep. So, pretty much 20 minutes load. And we're hauling secondary loads here this time, which means 36 tons of actual product that you're bringing in. Uh, winter weights for our highways haven't quite uh, been activated yet. So once the ground is all froze solid, highways are froze eight feet down or six feet down or even only five feet down, they'll uh, allow us to haul primary, which is 44 tons. 40, 42 ton maybe. Can't remember. 42, 44 tons of five instead of 36. So. so technically it costs you more to haul it uh, when you're only hauling secondary loads. Still burning about the same amount of fuel, just taking less parts, just makes more trips. All right, I think we loaded in under 20 minutes. I think it was more like 18 minutes or something like that. So anyway, pretty quick load. As long as the bins are full, once you're down on the floor and run the sweep, it does take a little bit longer. All right guys, I'm gonna take this load to town. I'll catch you on the flipper. Adios, amigos.